<laughs> finally, after all these years, the villains finally have their own movie. <laughs> For I to review. What the hell are you doing? Oh, Get out of here. Go. Ow. Go. Ow. Go. Damn it. Go. All right. Oh, come on. Whoa. Make more reviews and I'll leave. Goddamn villains. Hello everybody and welcome to another movie review vlog. And today I am going to review the 2016 movie Suicide Squad, written and directed by David Ayer. Suicide Squad is the very first, I want to say, comic book movie that is based solely around the villains this time around made by DC Comics. So the general premise of Suicide Squad is basically a bunch of supervillains getting together, well, forced upon their will by the US government, since they are lifers in a prison, to do very near impossible missions that no other US government agent wants to do to get the their hands dirty for them in exchange for a sliver of hope for a chance of freedom. And I gotta say that back in 2016, this movie had a lot of criticisms about it. They thought it was the one of the worst comic book movies ever made. Some say it was really not that bad. Now I don't want to be one of those types of fanboys that says you have to read the comic book series in order to understand the movie. But in this particular case, you pretty much have to because what a lot of people don't understand is that when they were getting into this movie, a PG-13 movie no less, that they were expecting superheroes to be along with it. Yeah, sure, there was the Ben Affleck Batman for like a few minutes, but the majority of the movie focuses on the villains themselves. We got Harley Quinn, Killer Croc, Deadshot, the Joker for a certain extent, I'll get into that in just a minute, Captain Boomerang, and a multitude of others who are absolutely the most worst at their, at their jobs, villain-wise. The actors themselves were pretty okay for the most part. Now about four years ago, I really enjoyed this movie, looking back on it, and it was really ch really fun, very entertaining, and it had a lot of action-packed scenes, but then again, when I watched a few more David Ayer movies, like that Brad Pitt tank movie or Training Day, I did realize that there's a lot of cliché gunplay moments that he does include into his action scenes, which does make sense. Now, in re-watching it again last night, I have to say that this movie wasn't so bad for the most part, but it there could have been a lot of things that could have improved upon. Throughout the movie, there are times where it has a very hard time changing color tone aspects from dark city alleys to bright colorful tones. And apparently this is supposed to be DC's way of shaping things up after Batman v Superman, where they were trying to show more of their brighter image, which honestly wasn't too bright of a movie. <laughs> But they would get they would get better later on down the road. But for this movie, they had a lot of interesting characters and a lot of villains just tossed in there, and they gave them their own little personal like 30 second to two minute backstory, which you pretty much had to move the whole story along because let's be honest here, a lot of these characters are pretty much expendable, and they are pretty expendable, especially the le the really lesser known ones. But for the lesser known ones, I found those guys to be very entertaining. You know what I'm talking about. And aside from the very le lesser known characters who were very entertaining, some of the A-list celebrities in here were also pretty great as well. From Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang, Margot Robbie as Holly Quinn, even Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, who was far more villainous than the main villain itself in this movie. Because out of all the villains in here, the main villain for the Suicide Squad movie was, uh, for the most part, pretty weak if you ask me. It had a very generic tone and it also a very narrow-minded concept which a lot of cookie cutter super villains pretty much play into with these types of movies. But for the most part these villains were pretty much highly ignored in comparison to the team itself which it focused on. Now, one more thing I want to include about the green-haired pink elephant in the room, you know who I'm talking about. Jared Leto did somewhat of an entertaining job as the Joker and it was a very unique twist about him. But what he lacked in the look and style, he made up for as the character itself. Not the greatest Joker of all time, oh no, no, no. But he was somewhat entertaining for the most part as a subplot for the main movie for his goals to get Harley Quinn out of prison. And I gotta say that this was a very interesting take on the Joker because the other, time, the other times that we see Joker interact with Harley Quinn, whether it be in the cartoon shows or in the comics, he always treated her like absolute dirt 
physically, emotionally, mentally, but in this one he was actually very determined to get her back, which is a very unique thing to see from the Joker himself. Some guy who was actually motivated to get his girl back, even if it means costing so many lives in the process. Now for the soundtrack of this movie, it was pretty jarbled at times, like a mixed jukebox of different things that they didn't want to go, they didn't know what to do with, whether they want to go with classic rock, uh, new wave music, hip-hop, or classic Eminem from the early 2000s. It was just like a very jumbled mess of just music being played in the background. Another thing I've also noticed about the general premise of the movie as well is that it also is quite different in comparison to the comics because in the comics the team always goes to third world nations to either assassinate a president or overthrow a government of some kind but in this one it was kind of straightforward with their uh, faceless uh, minions and monsters trying to uh, rule an entire world which I thought was very cheesy for the most part but at the same time you kind of have to roll with the punches and go for something a little bit more toned down for a comic book movie that is PG-13, which does make sense. Not a lot of people are, are gonna, going to agree with that, but the way I saw it, I thought it made absolute sense. There was also a lot, and now aside from the Joker and Harley Quinn romance, which I thought was pretty entertaining, there was also another very contrived romance between two characters as well, which I thought was extremely cheesy. And at times it felt like they were just kind of mashing a little bit too much things together. So overall, I would have to say that this movie, for the most part, is quite the popcorn filler and the straightforward, generic action type movie that you wouldn't mind watching on a Saturday afternoon if you guys want to, if you happen to have the movie on a rental or on Netflix or wherever you might see it's the streaming services that it's on. So. I'd say just give it a watch. It's not the worst comic book movie of all time, but I would say it's quite uh, quite somewhere in the middle of when it comes to best to worst comic book films. And for that, I will have to give this movie a two and a half out of five stars. And uh, with that said, I think that's pretty much it for this one. I got a few more reviews coming down the pipeline in the near future, so stick around and thank you very much for sticking with me. I will be coming back. I just got off of a bit of a hiatus, and I guess between court, quarantine still in effect here in my state, and a free Netflix subscription for the entire month, I figured I might as well just pump out a few more reviews so, so I can get some bigger ones along down the pipeline. And with that said, thank you all for watching. Big shout out to my Patreon sponsors for the week. Now, if you guys have any comments about the movie, whether it was good or bad, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Any requests that you guys want to give me for any future movie review vlogs, feel free to hit me up on Patreon. And with that said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.